everybody who's listening to this has the opportunity to make this year truly exceptional. Massive opportunity when you first came across it, but I think every year it's becoming more and more of an opportunity. Today, we're gonna to dive into why we think this is such a great opportunity for you if you're looking to start a new business this year. You do the numbers, and I think some people listening or watching now will have heard you go through those numbers, and the penny starts to drop. Pivotal, because it's not the 500 pounds profit, this, it's symbolic of the fact that I'm now never looking back. So if we can capitalize on getting into this trend now, we can have businesses that run with even less maintenance and generate more profit in the future. That feeling, it's an amazing feeling because once you realize the, what have I been doing? Like the last seven years, what, what have I been doing? I've been trading my time for money and I could have earned twice what I earned in a day just by thinking ahead. Welcome to the Dropship Unlocked podcast, your key to unlocking the secrets of high ticket dropshipping. I'm Lewis Smith, founder of Dropship Unlocked, and with me is our client success coach, James Erdley. Now, when we're not recording podcast episodes, we're running our own e-commerce businesses and helping aspiring entrepreneurs launch their own high ticket dropshipping businesses. So if you're ready to learn how to build your own six or even seven figure business, pick up a copy of my book, The Home Turf Advantage, whether you're looking to replace your income or launch a side hustle. I wrote this book as a roadmap to help you launch a low maintenance, high profit e-commerce business that gives you the freedom to spend more time with your family, travel the world and work on your own terms. Ready to join us? Visit htabook.com to get your copy today. Now sit back, relax and let's unlock your potential with the Dropship Unlocked podcast. Today's episode is designed specifically for anyone that is searching tirelessly for that opportunity that can propel them towards their goals and dreams. We're often on that quest, I think, for that one chance, that one leap of faith that we want to take that will push us toward that golden opportunity to transform our lives. And this year, I believe, presents a unique opportunity that we believe is the key to unlocking your potential. We've sifted through trends, we've analysed the market data, and we've zeroed in on what we believe is the single most lucrative opportunity in the current landscape. So stay tuned as we dive deep into this incredible opportunity, which is wide open for anyone who's ready to put in the effort to shape a remarkable future. So Lewis, what do you think is the best opportunity for people this year? Yeah, this is an exciting topic to be discussing today. The uh, the start of a new year always brings with it a new level of excitement and optimism for us as entrepreneurs. So everybody who's listening to this has the opportunity to make this year truly exceptional. And I know that we can discuss a very lucrative method for people to use to achieve their goals in this episode. In fact, it's the business model that I've used to generate almost £5 million in sales over the last few years. And it's the business model that I know you use, James, along with hundreds of our other Dropship Unlocked members to achieve incredible results. And it's running an e-commerce business. But more specifically than that, it's using the specific model that I've used, which is called the Home Turf Advantage model. Now, I wanted to just quickly explain how this came about for me, because I used to work in a corporate nine to five job. I had the nice securities, the private healthcare, the company car, the gold standard pension. And I used to make anywhere between about three and a half to four and a half thousand pounds per month as my salary. And I'd listen to podcasts on my way to work and I'd watch YouTube videos once I caught the bug for entrepreneurship after I'd read the four hour work week book by Tim Ferriss. And I was listening to all these different business models and money making ideas. And people were talking about affiliate marketing being a great model to get started with or blogging being your way to success and making your money through Google AdSense. And people also talked about Amazon FBA fulfilled by Amazon as a an e-commerce business model or retail arbitrage where you go into stores and check what the price of something is and then you can list it and very manual processes some of these but none of them stacked up to quite what I wanted I had some specific criteria in mind for the type of business that I wanted because I wanted it to be low maintenance eventually I didn't want to create another job for myself I wanted what would eventually become a lifestyle business that I could run but by doing so, I didn't want to sacrifice the profitability. I still wanted it to have very high profit, 
per sale, but I also wanted it to be low admin. I didn't want loads of hassle, loads of emails, stressful, you know, feelings every time I opened up my laptop. And so I just needed it to be highly scalable, but also provide me with a great lifestyle. And so I was looking around and I thought that this is not going to work with the low priced items from China model that everybody talks so highly of, you know, where you told to find these trending widgets like a pair of sunglasses from China and then you put them up on a Shopify store and then ship them over to your customer and hope that they don't notice it takes for a month to be delivered and then when it does it arrives in this crumpled up package and it's really poor quality and the thing snaps as soon as they use it and then they end up I just thought that's not the kind of business that I want I'm not going to be proud to stand behind that am I so I kind of had to to look around and think, well, how can I create a business that's not going to disappoint customers, that isn't going to end up with really long delivery times, that's not going to lead to bad reviews because it's a poor quality product. And I thought, well, hang on a sec, this model works in terms of drop shipping because you know companies like Wayfair who do twelve billion dollars per year in sales, they're drop shipping ninety five percent of their products, as in they don't carry stock for ninety five percent of their products. They come directly from the suppliers or the manufacturers. So I was thinking, okay, well, it definitely works. What about if I sold products at a higher price point? So for example, if I made a sale for a product that was £2,000 at a 30% profit margin, that would net me £600 in profit. So I kind of worked backwards and thought, well, if I'm on three and a half to 4500 per month, depending on like the commission for that month, the income that I would need to replace that income, I'd only need to make seven or eight sales per month. If I was making £600 profit per sale, seven or eight sales, and I'd have replaced my income. So that's like making one sale every four days. I thought, well, that'd be a pretty boring business. Like I wouldn't have to do anything for, you know, four days and then, oh, another sale, better deal with it. And I thought, well, I don't know exactly the route yet. And I didn't want to go into it overconfidently. But I, deep down, I thought, well, I'm sure I can do a lot better than one sale every four days. And so today, we're going to dive into why we think this is such a great opportunity for you if you're looking to start a new business this year. And I think it is a huge opportunity this year. It was a massive opportunity when you first came across it. But I think every year, it's becoming more and more of an opportunity as the barrier gets lower and, and as we get more tools to help us to create these businesses. And I had a similar moment to you before I started with my own high ticket drop shipping business where you do the numbers. And I think some people listening or watching now will have heard you go through those numbers and the penny starts to drop when you realize with a high ticket drop shipping business, the amount of admin is not very high from four orders you know, or an order every four days. And suddenly you've got a business that will match and then overcome the initial salary that you've got in a nine to five job. But you also get all of the freedom that comes along with it as well. So hopefully we can dig into how we believe that anyone can also make the most of this opportunity if they're willing to work hard. But let's start with the basics. So high ticket dropshipping for people that aren't necessarily familiar with this and aren't aware of this opportunity. What is it? And why do you think it's such a big opportunity? Sure. So let's run through it. So a, a dropshipping business is an e-commerce business that sells products online and arranges for suppliers to deliver products directly to customers. So you're not holding the stock. You don't even touch the products at any time. So it's a purely online business for you. You just have to have a laptop or eventually you could run it from your phone, right? So high ticket dropshipping involves selling more expensive items, which have a higher profit margin. So remember, we talked about the idea of selling the sunglasses, which might give you, you know, a 10 pound profit per sale or something versus selling something for 2000, like a luxury home furniture or a big stand up electric office desk or a a uh, home treadmill or you know something like high-end gym equipment something like that those are the types of products that you would see people selling or a, a luxury barbecue is the example that we often use and as we move into this year e-commerce continues to grow as well but the way to think about it is high ticket items aren't just luxury purchases they're not just kind of one-off luxuries they're investments for consumers because often they're passionate about the things that they're buying. And so they'll they'll buy them. And then sometimes there are ways you can cross sell or upsell other things as well. So you're really building a brand by doing this and building a customer list as well that you can resell to down the line. Now, this didn't start to really come together for me until I signed my first few suppliers. I'd built my Shopify store and I was still working my job at the time. So I was doing it kind of evenings and weekends. And I was off work ill for one day, which is quite rare for me. I had a virus or something. So I was like feeling sorry for myself, spent the day in bed, 
And I'd uploaded products the last few days, but I just wasn't thinking about the new online business at this point. I guess I'd been excited, but you know, when you're ill, your mind's just not on it. And so I was lying in bed and then suddenly my phone made a sound like a cash register, you know, that ching sound that cash registers do. And I was like, hang on a second. And I looked down and it said 693 pounds. And then 10 minutes later, a sale came through for 799 pounds. And later on, there was a sale for £1,337, so all these strange amounts. And I was like, hang on a second, from those three sales, that, and, and uh, like this is the moment it first came to life for me, I realized I'd made £848 in profit, if you assume a 30% margin, which I, I don't know exactly the margins back then, but the, that's probably the average amongst our suppliers, minus the little that I spent on ads. I mean, I'd be left with at least uh, 500 pounds profit, probably more, but say I'd spent a couple of hundred pounds on ads to get those first few sales, 500 pounds in profit. That was more than I had or would have earned in a day had I not been ill and gone to work and sat in traffic for two hours and gone into a, you know an office and spent the entire day out of my home. And at that moment, I just remember calling my wife and my mum and my dad and explaining or trying to explain to them what just happened. And I don't think they quite really understood. And they're like, but okay, it sounds great. Like, well done. <laughs> you know, they don't really fully understand that. I'm like, no, this is pivotal because it's not the 500 pounds profit. This, it's symbolic of the fact that I'm now never looking back because I've proven the concept and I can't describe that feeling. It's an amazing feeling because once you realize the, what have I been doing? Like the last seven years, what what have I been doing? I've been trading my time for money and I could have earned twice what I earned in a day just by thinking ahead and front loading the work and putting the effort in and building a system. Yeah, it's not easy, but it's very simple and straightforward. You still need to put in the work, but that feeling is one that now our Dropship Unlocked members are experiencing every single day. And I love it when they post about it or they tell us about it on the two weekly Q&A coaching calls that we have as well. It's that great feeling of saying like, I'd love to celebrate with you because I just made my first sale. And it's great to hear. And we're hearing it, as you say, every day when people make these first sales, there's definitely a penny drop moment when you, when you realize you've made your first 500 pounds in a single day. And your story is amazing because you made that while you were off work ill in bed and you weren't able to do any work. So you really had to put the business model to the test of can this make money without me when you were in no condition to actually help and work on the business at the time so fantastic story mine was a similar story where I uh, I was actually at work at the time and I made my first sale through my high ticket dropshipping business and it was over a thousand pounds for my first sale I think it was about a thousand two hundred pounds but I wasn't with my phone at the time so I didn't get the Shopify cha-ching noise at the time unfortunately but I got back to my phone after I got back to to my car where I'd left it and realized that while I was doing work or whatever I was doing, it didn't matter what I was doing at the time, I could make money from this business model that I had put a lot of work in to set up. But as soon as I put that work in and got this business model set up, money was going to come in no matter what I was doing. And I was hooked. Similar to you, I think we get hooked on that feeling and knowing that you can make money. And ever since then, I've scaled from that position. And it's a fantastic opportunity today. So I want to talk about a little bit why we think high ticket dropshipping and e-commerce is such a big opportunity. What are the current and the future trends that you see that make it such a brilliant opportunity right now? Well, with more consumers shopping online every single day, as that confidence in... I remember back in the day when the internet at first was, was a thing, people were petrified of putting their credit card details. You wouldn't dream of putting your card details in online. Now, I probably buy five or six things on Amazon every day, you know, in our household. So I think it's just we've become so used to it that if you can become not just a consumer of e-commerce, but actually a business owner who benefits from it by running an e-commerce business, you're onto a winner, right? Because you're, you're riding that trend, that wave as the industry shifts over to e-commerce. And high ticket items are also becoming the norm. It's like the evolution of the retail sector, but it's happening in the digital world. You know, think of things like luxury home furniture or office furniture, like we talked about, or home gym equipment or the barbecues we talked about all of these things that people are just now more comfortable buying online and parting with money without seeing the product always but that, remember that's just consumers the items i've talked about there is just consumers imagine if you're selling to the world of business customers as well they, they often won't just buy a single product they might be buy 50 of the same product you know so you can just as easily sell to businesses as well and run this as a b2b type model you see plenty of our 
members in Dropship Unlocked to do that. And uh, yeah, you might make fewer sales overall, but when you do, there'll be much, much bigger sales usually. And so they might buy 50 or 100 items of a single, units of a single item. Also, the digital marketing channels that enable us to run traffic and, and get customers and footfall to our businesses now are just becoming more and more automated and effective as well. So back in the day, we used to have to do so much fiddly technical work to get it to work. Um, but now you really don't need to have any marketing experience at all to drive consistent sales for your business. When we first started, I remember having to create these like upside down Google shopping funnels and have complex lists of negative keywords that would funnel customers who were searching for certain products into one campaign and then and then have like a priority stack system. And I mean, we did it and that's the way that I taught it for the first couple of years. But now it's incredible. The results that you can get from just leaning into the machine learning and the AI and the algorithm on these ad platforms is incredible. And so if you can harness that for your marketing, why would you not do it? And for more on exactly how to do that, you can check out episode 23 of the Dropship Unlocked podcast, which is titled Mastering Google Ads for Your E-Commerce Store. So maybe line up episode 23 after you've listened to this one. Would hugely recommend it because Google Ads is the primary way that we'll make sales, especially when you first get started to bring revenue into your business. But I think that the automated marketing that is becoming more and more prevalent now with Google and making sure that they have a lot of the control and do a lot of the machine learning to get you the best results should put a smile on the face of anyone thinking about getting into e-commerce and building a dropshipping business. Because it means that we don't need to have a degree in marketing anymore to be able to run campaigns and drive sales for our business. We just need to know the exact steps to set up these types of campaigns and now we see that those campaigns perform better than the ones that we used to have to set up manually. And so it's a great opportunity. And I think that's a big point as to why this year specifically, for anyone that's a beginner with business or e-commerce or dropshipping, I think that's a real reason to get started now due to the types of marketing campaigns that we set up. This year, last year, and I'm sure into the future, we're hearing a lot about the rise of AI. So that's all we're talking about ChatGPT and all the different ways that AI can now help our business to scale. How do you think this will impact the dropshipping landscape? Yeah, there are some incredible AI tools that are being released and updated constantly. It's like every single week, there seems to be a new industry shattering update coming out of the world of AI. So it's, it's a tough one to even keep up with. But some AI tools can significantly streamline the setup and operation of a dropshipping business. So again, it's something we can harness and not fear as entrepreneurs, but just embrace. Whether that's for analytics or marketing of our businesses, we talked about Google ads and Facebook ads, whether that's customer service as well, and just having an automated human-like chatbot that has all of the catalog product knowledge of every single SKU product on your website and never sleeps and works every day of the year and can talk to 10,000 customers all at one time. That's pretty incredible, right? And if we can set that up, which we can now with AI tools, and it just allows us to set things up quickly and more efficiently, but it also just improves daily operations and means we can spend time, our time as business owners working on the things that grow the business. So we're not there as entrepreneurs working in the business anymore, tinkering around and dealing with customer support tickets and things like that. That can all now be done pretty much by AI with very little human involvement. And so, yeah, it's incredible. And in this model, AI can be used in so many different ways, helping us come up with different content ideas. You know, if we're thinking about we want to improve our product descriptions, perhaps we can use AI to help us reformat and rewrite those product descriptions or come up with blog post ideas. You've got to be careful. You don't just want to be pumping out AI generated content into the ecosystem because they probably will be able to detect that. And I'm sure there'll, there'll be some level of penalty for that in the future but you can certainly harness it and use it for inspiration and structure and guidance and then just add your spin to it the way i think about ai um, is quite interesting i was at um, the gym this morning and they've got this thing there called the e-gym don't know if you're familiar with it where like it takes your measurements and it tells you it takes your height and weight and age and everything and then you sit on the machine and there's no like settings it all just auto adapts to you it's got like a camera and then the, the timer starts and it knows who you are. It knows your max strength, your training weight. And then you just follow the, the reps and then you move on to the next one. And then and you like do a, a full body workout circuit. And it's like this 
computer robot personal trainer that adjusts your maximum weight and event, like the, your training weight and eventually kind of pushes you to optimize your body over time. And so it kind of acts as like the guardrails, you know, it gamifies the process, it makes it fun, it means I don't have to think as much about the, the settings and the weight and I can just focus on the main thing, which is doing the weights, right? And so that's the way I think about um, AI when it comes to this type of business. It's there to optimize and improve our businesses like it is our health and Egypt, but it's us that have to do the work. You know, we've still got to use it. We've got to put in the work to make it act to, like the, it, the output will be dictated by the input. So whilst it is a great tool and it's there, we can't just kind of rely on it and say, oh yeah, I, you know, I'll use AI to just make the whole business. It's, I've not seen that successfully work um, at this stage, but it can certainly be used to you know improve things like the customer journey in dropshipping. So we've got AI driven chatbots that are providing instant customer support, as I mentioned, or, or personalized product recommendations even. And even like optimizing the website experience on a user by user basis. So yeah, I mean, it can make a, a real seamless and satisfying shopping experience for customers. And I think we're really just seeing the, the beginning of it. Yeah, we're fortunate to be in the business at this time while artificial intelligence is growing as it is. It's only going to get lower cost. The tools are only going to get better and more intuitive for us to use. So if we can capitalize on getting into this trend now, we can have businesses that run with even less maintenance and generate more profit in the future is how I see things going. We're talking about more profit. I want to dive into the financial side of high ticket dropshipping. So why do you think it's such a big opportunity in terms of making money? Yeah, well, selling high ticket items just means larger profits per order. You know, so it's like choosing, we talked earlier about the sunglasses. If you're going to be selling sunglasses for, say, £15 on your Shopify site, maybe you make £10 profit if you do really well. Like if you manage to, to get a great margin, imagine that versus selling a thousand pound stand up desk and making 300 pounds profit, 15 pounds profit versus 300 pounds profit. You need to sell a lot more sunglasses to make up the same amount, but it's also the admin that goes with it. It's also all of the refund requests and the returns and all of the issues, like you can't return the products to China. So you have to take them back. What if they're faulty? Like with one desk, if there's a problem with it, you just send it back to the supplier and they just change it because it was faulty. As a lifestyle business, remember the criteria I talked about at the beginning? That, that was one of the things I wanted, low admin, but also high scalability and high profit potential. It seems obvious, but if you're going out there fishing for customers as marketers, as entrepreneurs, we're fishing for customers, then choose your bait wisely when you're fishing. If you want to catch bigger fish, then you need the right bait to catch them, right? So higher prices for more premium products mean that you'll result in a lot more profit but often and this is the bit people don't sometimes talk about it's actually a much easier buying experience as well because the types of customers that are willing to spend money on those types of luxurious items or certainly like higher end items just are less problematic they don't cause this as much customer service admin they don't have um, requests for refunds and complaints and things like that it's just usually a fairly seamless process and obviously you can provide like a the VIP level of experience as well for them. Because as we said before, if you only have one sale every four days, well, even if I don't have a virtual assistant yet, I can just answer the phone myself and just give them a call and be like, hey, just checking. Did you receive your stand-up desk? Okay, perfect. All right. Well, I'm the, the company owner, so I'd give you a call. You, know, you can't do that if you're selling 10,000 sunglasses a month, right? So it just makes it much easier. And eventually you can have your virtual assistant do that and, and really put a personal touch on the business without you having to do that work. The other thing is the return on investment can be huge. So you asked about the financial upsides of this. Once you're up and running, after the minimal outlay that it takes to get started, remember you keep all that profit because it's your business. So rather than having really high overhead costs or having you know to go and lease a warehouse space or hire lots of staff when you first get started or lease cars or vehicles or offices or you know big machinery, you don't really have any of that stuff. You have a, maybe some ad cost, a couple of hundred pounds maybe in, in ads and like some software bits and pieces here and there, but it's very low, low overhead. And so I think it's just that cost effectiveness. It's that, you know, unlike traditional retail and that traditional commerce, dropshipping just requires less capital because you're not stocking items. You don't have to go and buy a hundred items up front. Instead, we're just connecting buyers with products so we don't have to take on any debt. 
And so that really takes the pressure off us when we're building a business. But the important thing is we are actually still building a business. We're building a brand and an asset. We're not just a kind of a faceless middleman. By doing this, we're building a customer list, building an email list, getting repeat buyers. And we're just, you know, it's like John Lewis. They stock Samsung TVs, LG TVs, Panasonic TVs, but they themselves are still a brand, John Lewis, right? Just because they don't, they are not the brand name on the TV. They're using those brands. They're leveraging those brands to get footfall into their store. And then they are the brand themselves, right? So that's, that's all we're doing, but just in a digital format. And with all the benefits that the digital format gives us as well, we don't have to be going to a store. We don't have to buy stock. We don't have to look after staff. We don't have to look after customers in person either. It's a completely different kettle of fish. And as you're going through all of the benefits there, it's so exciting. I mean, even to me now to hear those benefits of the business model that we operate, every time I hear it, it makes so much sense as to why we are in this particular business model. The numbers, I believe, are very much on our side. Now, of course, it's hard work to get up and running as it with any business. It's no different with this type of business. And we can both attest to that. We had to put work in to get to the stage we're at. But once you go into a model that you know has the potential to have such high success, you know that your hard work is going to be paid off once you get set up and use the specific type of dropshipping that we recommend and not the the AliExpress model that I've used in the past. So hopefully it's exciting for everyone listening in as well, because I remember when I was first looking for the best opportunity for me to start a business once I had dedicated myself to starting a business and achieving my financial goals. I remember hearing about all these opportunities and the light bulb really went off for me. And I had that level of excitement that I, I'm getting again now when I'm hearing again. So hopefully listeners have been able to understand the benefits as well and get excited about them from today's episode but to wrap up this sort of section and to explain about what steps people can take instead of just consuming people want to take action and get started with a business how would you suggest that people start after they finish listening to this episode well understanding your market and really choosing your niche wisely and to do that i just advise following some kind of blueprint because it's like if you're setting the foundations for a house you don't just dig and hope, right? You, you need to plan it correctly. It needs to be a well thought out plan. They need to be strong. They need to be planned. And yeah, you don't just dig hope for the best. And I mean, if we do that, we'll be very busy because we'll just be digging and think, oh, this is hard work, isn't it? I'm digging away. And, and that's the thing. Don't confuse busyness with results and, and succeeding because you can be very busy going in the wrong direction. And what that means is it just leaves us stuck and it wastes a lot of our time and a lot of our money. And then when we fail with it, we, it leaves us demotivated and demoralized. And we think, why did I fail? And actually, it was because we never had the blueprint to start with. So I think shortcut a lot of that success. If you're going to invest in your new business and you thought, I'm going to be an entrepreneur, I'm going to invest in my business. What I always do first is invest in knowledge. If I can shortcut the route to success that somebody else has learned all the lessons from already, I'm I'm going that route because I know that it will cost me way less money in the long run if I can if I can buy those lessons from someone else. Education is just critical to this. You've got to equip yourself with the right skills, the right knowledge. We're always learning every day, both James and I constantly trying to absorb as much knowledge as we can. And so you just shortcut your route to success. If I want to do something and I can see someone else has already done it, I'm going to them and I'm asking them, can I pay you for your time to to figure it out? It's just much cheaper and much faster route to success overall and for anyone who is looking to dive a little bit deeper into this you can grab a copy of my book at htabook.com it's your first step towards mastering high ticket dropshipping using my home turf advantage model just a quick heads up if you'd like to share your questions stories successes or challenges you can email us directly at podcast at dropshipunlocked.com and you never know we might even feature you on the next podcast episode also if you want access to today's show notes or any of the resources we've mentioned in the episode today then head over to dropshipunlocked.com forward slash podcast we also have a small favor to ask of you if you enjoyed the show so far you could take a minute to leave us a rating and review on your podcast platform of choice you wouldn't believe how much your reviews help us grow the podcast we'll even read out some of our favorites on the next episode so if you want to be featured on the show please do go ahead and leave us a review today Today. Thanks so much for your support. We really couldn't do it without you. And we absolutely love hearing what you think of the podcast. Now let's answer a question that we've had in from a listener. So thank you, Dickie, for getting your question in. And the way he got his question in was by emailing us. It's podcast at dropshipunlocked.com. And if you've got a question that you want answered on the podcast, 
then email us and let us know how we can help. And I'm going to pose this question to you now, Lewis. So Dickie's asked, I'm quite far down the line building a dropshipping business already. However, the products that I'm selling are priced between 30 and 200 pounds. Can a lower ticket business still work? Thanks for your question, Dickie. So yeah, I mean, it can. While a, a lower ticket business it is definitely still feasible, the thing is it inherently involves more admin tasks, as we talked about in this episode. So I'd need to process a much higher volume of orders if I was selling sunglasses versus if I was selling stand-up desks to make the same target profit amount. So that means a lot more customers to deal with, a lot more probably ad spend to acquire all of those customers, lots of moving parts, lots of returns to think about. And so just in order to achieve that same level of income, it just means a much higher level of admin, which also increases my workload and the complexity of operations in my business and probably my costs as well, because I'll need more team members, more staff, more software, et cetera. So if I was looking to streamline my business and reduce the sheer number of transactions, pivoting over to a high ticket model using the home turf advantage model is the way I would go. So high ticket dropshipping generally requires a lot fewer sales to meet my target income, which then offers me a much more efficient way to operate my business. So yeah, though lower ticket items can work, they do offer some advantages, like potentially you've got a wider customer base to choose from. They don't always offer the same level of advantages as high ticket items, because in terms of that income efficiency and order management and the complexity, there are quite a few downsides to it. So just weighing up the benefits and maybe pivoting to high ticket items could streamline the business and enhance your profitability in the long term as well. So hopefully that's okay as a bit of a snapshot answer, Dickie. But if you want to go deeper into this, then I've laid it all out in my book. I go much, much deeper into the whys and the what's of this business model. So kind of why it works and what you need to do to make it work. But also we dive into the how to make it work as well in my book. So if that's helpful, then pick up a copy of the Home Turf Advantage today. You'll find the link to that in the show notes below this episode. Thank you, Lewis, again. So now let's highlight a listener review that we've had for the podcast as well. I love seeing these come through and thank you to Sam who's left a review. So I'll read it out for the podcast now. So Sam said, hi guys, just wanted to say a massive thank you for all the information you put out. It's invaluable. I've backlogged and listened to all of the podcasts, absorbing all of the information while I get the funds together to take that next step. I've also purchased Lewis's book and I'm looking forward to getting stuck into that too. So thanks again for everything you both do. Amazing. Thank you so much, Samuel, for your review. Really appreciate that. Yeah, thanks very much, Sam. We really appreciate you leaving us that review. That's really nice to see. So um, yeah, we're glad to hear that you've been enjoying the podcast and you've been binge listening or binge watching it. And hopefully, uh, well, it's certainly inspired you to take action and pick up a copy of the book. And we can't wait to welcome you into our program um, whenever you're ready. If you want to help spread the word of the podcast, it's really easy to do so. Just leave us a review on your preferred podcast platform, just like Sam did. Or if you're into YouTube, why not leave us a comment under this video? Your thoughts could then be highlighted in an upcoming episode, just like we did today. And before we wrap up, think about letting a friend in on today's episode. Share the insights about the biggest money-making opportunity of this year with someone you know. It could be the start of an exciting entrepreneurial journey for them too. And what better way to explore the potential of e-commerce than with a friend by your side? So share this episode now and it might just spark a life-changing conversation. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Dropship Unlocked podcast. We hope you found the discussion both inspiring and entertaining. If you're ready to begin your own high-ticket dropshipping journey, then here's what to do next. I've taken all of the years of my own experience, both in running my e-commerce businesses and teaching hundreds of others how to do the same, and I've condensed it all into my book, The Home Turf Advantage. It's your comprehensive guide designed to help you create your own e-commerce business. And you can grab your copy today at htabook.com. Stay connected by subscribing to the podcast. This way you'll never miss an episode packed with valuable insights. And if you enjoyed what you heard today, please leave us a review. Your feedback motivates us and we love sharing our favorite reviews on future episodes. And thank you for deciding to spend your time with us today. We really appreciate you and we look forward to sharing more high ticket dropshipping insights with you on our next episode of the Dropship Unlocked podcast.